so tell me can you can you hear my voice now is it clear so i don't know uh, why some people are saying yeah it, it is clear now right okay good okay fine so the important features of python we are discussing so python is a multi paradigm language so that means that it supports multiple styles of programming so if you are coming from java c sharp cobol pascal any any type of any kind of programming language each and every programming language has its own style right in c language by default you start with the main function and you write some code and you just will compile and just run right when it, when it comes to java you you start writing code with class class and followed by a main function then you write the first statement right so when it comes to python you don't need to do so i'll show you the examples of these three styles first one is procedural example is c language and second one is functional programming language example is scala and r there are languages the style is like this you have data with you and you apply function on that this is exactly opposite to procedural style in procedural style you have a function and that function you pass the data and function takes the data and process the data and returns so this is the procedural style in functional style you have data function comes to the data and process it and goes back example is an excel sheet in excel sheet you have one column of values right generally you have when you have one column of values you can apply a formula on top of it right so i'm still <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. Fine. The second style is functional style, where you can, uh, where you you have the data, and function comes to the data and processes it and goes back. Okay. And the next one, so the next one is object oriented style, where everything is considered or treated as a as a data type. Anything in a system is considered as a data type. That is which is which is generally created by using a concept called class. Take a complex system like banking system. You are supposed to implement a big banking system. Take every department and take each and every process in the bank. For example, personal loans, personal banking. So it's a big system, right? To implement such such a big system, so you have to be you have to be very very clear in each and at each and every stage. So in object orientation, every subsystem can be created and and created as a data type. and that can be reused any number of times and you can scale the entire application uh, as, as for the requirement so these are the three different styles python has this um python has this nature because of this people are moving to python so anybody can do python programming even though they are from different program programming backgrounds or if you don't have any programming background so python welcomes you because it has different styles so you don't need to lose your dna you can start working with python straight away this is important point so that's the reason we have discussed and python has 1.8 lakh packages in 2019 december this was the last time when i when i have counted that uh that the record was around november 18 that 2019 i think so there are 1.8 lakh python packages that means 1.8 lakh libraries are available so you can literally do do anything okay so python is not a just a scripting language some people say python is python scripting that is a little different and python is dynamically typed okay so these are these are the features
and how python and these are the people who are using python youtube dropbox bitly yahoo yahoo maps in fact so pinterest and quora these are the best examples i think everybody watches youtube right so gossiping videos a lot of videos interview videos and um so a lot of videos that you watch every day in youtube right so the youtube the most the majority of the youtube system is written in python so he is a person who has created python and his name is guido van rosem and how python code runs okay so i think mostly we are done with the introduction part and how do we code in python and what are the tools that are there in the market and so i'll i'll give you one um, one thing um what is this uh, browser we okay see if you are able to log in to guru.truegolfi.com so you can actually see the material in truequalify.com uh this is finance window in truequalify you should be able to see if you are a student of course everybody should everybody should uh, see this if you have the code so you should see this actually uh you should see only the python remaining you don't see generally once you get the code you will see this okay so here in the introduction there is an introductory video so along with that so there is an installation page you can see how to download python and how to do the installation okay so <clears throat> there are multiple versions of python and you can download python from different websites one is python.org this is one website and second one is anaconda.com these people always name with snakes right so this is python this is anaconda so which one is better anaconda is better because that is bigger so we are recommending anaconda python the reason is it has every package that is required for your development purpose okay so most of the packages are already available with anaconda so the installation i have given i think most of you guys are having laptops okay and material if you want to access material the best way is um do that from your uh, laptop in mobiles mobile view is not at uh, developed maybe that will be done in a week of time so people who are having mobiles also can access our website not python guru python guru has some content here so go to python guru and there is a um material section here so this is very basic material i think uh, most of the material is same in true qualify and pythonguru.com in both the places okay so soon you will be um, the, the latest edition will not be there in python guru in true qualify you'll be having the latest editions and videos um the new set of exercises or projects mostly that will be available for guru.truequality.com only so this is a this is the open source and free version so here also you can see the first introductory ch introduction chapter and you can go to the installation page and go through all this and you can do it okay so installation i'm not covering as part of uh, this course for now you can go through the website and do it so there are two ways you can do that one is go to pythonguru.in so this is this is one website go to materials in the first chapter you will see an installation that is one way and second one is true qualify so if you are a student if you are already got registered with this uh, you should see this this is what you should see here click on python and the first chapter and you will see the content and here the fourth fourth one clear so we'll see how many people have registered i don't know we'll see that later 
Okay, so once you're done with installation, <coughs> so invalid and expired code, okay. So try this code. So if you want to join this, just try this code. 485295, that's the code. So try this code and uh, I think you should be able to do that. So <coughs> your login credentials are different. So first you have to register by going to truequalify.com guru.truequalify.com go to this section so this particular site and their uh, learner and trainer there are two logins and register in the first learner site and that sends an email to you so open the email and activate the link and go to uh, once you log in again go back and log in the login with the uh, learners credentials you'll see an option on the top right as join group here and in students, you'll see join group. Okay. And select the group. So Python crash course. And you have to enter that code here. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so once you're done with installation, once you're done with installation, you should see. Search for Anaconda prompt on Windows search bar. You should see this. And click on that one. So you'll see this empty screen. So Jupyter Notebook. So how to use the material, I'll show you at the end of the session. So in, in material, there's a built-in Python interpreter. So when you run the code, that opens automatically. Uh, let's say strings. You want to run this code, just click editor, run the code. But don't do this here, just do that on guru.truequalify.com because if you do anything on this website, nothing will be captured. It doesn't know what exactly you're doing. But if you do that in guru.truequalify.com, that actually gives you a score. In true in guru.truequalify.com, so when you when you are doing some practice or when you're reading something, when you're watching this video, that the, the website captures each and every action of you, and that gives you a score that looks like this. So that looks like this is a dummy page. Actually, initially you won't see this at the end of your course, you'll see the report. Okay. So if you really want to get this kind of report, um, do that. So only do everything with the guru.truequalify.com. Okay. So Python guru is also the material is available in a free form with uh, limited content, but don't do that. So this is a free account for you. Basically it's a commercial account. We have we are giving this for free for some time. So,
when you open anaconda prompt and jupyter notebook so open anaconda prompt and jupyter notebook that should open your default web browser like this okay so what you have done is you open anaconda prompt and you just type jupyter notebook jupyter space notebook so you should see this don't close this window that should be running in the background don't close this that opens your default web browser like this and uh, you can create a jupyter notebook here and you can start coding here sample so you can start coding here x equal to 20 y is equal to 30 and print x plus y small program shift enter to execute the code can you see this everybody you understand what i'm doing here What exactly is this? So can can you hear my voice, everybody? You can hear, right? Okay, fine. So once you open Anaconda prompt and just once you type the Jupyter notebook, so you should see this. So you're supposed to see this one and click on new and open Python 3 and this is what you see. Okay, see all these steps are already there in the material. Just follow those steps until this point. It's not a difficult thing. Can start writing code here. Okay, fine. So once you open a Jupyter notebook, you just start coding like this. X equal to 20, y is equal to 30, x plus print x plus y and shift enter. So beautiful beauty of this notebook is you can actually have you can actually change. The values and you can shift enter and run the code again and again and you can repeat this program okay so, so this is very useful particularly when you are doing data analysis so this is very very useful and to practice code and to run the code of code line by line also this is pretty much useful so let me write a program even without teaching python lc how many people can understand this program Do you understand this problem, everybody? I, I I don't I don't I did not I don't I did not teach you anything so far, but still you should be able to understand what exactly is this. <clears throat> so 
see how to open this jupyter notebook and how to run the code uh, go to my pythonguru.in material or else you can go to guru.rugalbi.in if you are able to log into rugalbi.com okay so there is guru.rugalbi.com if you get the code and if you are able to log in you can see the material there or else there is a free material on pythonguru.in so in both the places go to the first chapter and there is installation steps you can come um, up to this point so without any issues okay if you don't understand that that means you don't you don't understand english <coughs> so once you open the jupyter notebook so you start writing writing code code like this so this is a simple program right so you can change the values and execute this program any number of times okay so look at this program so don't worry about installations and logins for now just listen to the class so so many people are worrying about how to get the material and all the stuff don't worry i'll explain that at the end of the session don't ask me so, so many questions okay so don't worry about material access don't worry about how to run these programs so i i'll tell you at the end of the session so for now just try to understand the class okay so tell me so you guys you understand this program right you don't know what what you have written here but by reading the reading the code you can understand this is a simple interest program right right so why my system got stuck now hmm. so <clears throat> so unlike c language or unlike um java or any high level language so python has a clean syntax you start writing code anyway this is a just jupyter notebook you can also write in a notepad in windows so you can write code in windows just open the notepad and you can start writing the code the same code you write here type here just save this code uh let me save this code as a sample dot py just by dot py and save this as dot py extension and just save so open command prompt you know command prompt right so go to desktop and python and sample dot py so this is another way of doing it so one thing you can open jupyter notebook you can actually run the code there itself or else you can go to command prompt and you can open a notepad there just write some code and go to that path using uh, windows commands and just run with the help of python command so there is a built in python command so you can see that here so when you go to command command prompt and type python this is what you should see this is python command prompt here also you can do python coding but this executes everything line by line so it's not like jupyter notebook this definitely runs line by line okay so if you want to come out of that just control d and just come out so this is a command line version so there are three ways you can do python programming so one is you can do you can go to command prompt you can open in a text pad or notepad write some code like this save in appropriate location and run with python command that is one way of running python the python code and mostly administrators and support people mostly they run python programs using command prompt only they don't use uh, this kind of uh, jupyter notebooks or ides okay jupyter notebook is another one so you open anaconda prompt and there you type jupyter space notebook and that opens a default web browser like this and i think initially you see this initially this is what you see <coughs> So 
so you can you can create a new notebook here and this this is what you see and you can start writing the code this is second way of doing python programs and third way open so there is a, a specific ide tool called pycharm just type pycharm download so download pycharm so i think there are two different um, yeah there are two different versions don't download pro professional edition use community edition so this is just download and double click next next you are done with installation okay so there are three ways generally you can do python programs one by using command version and second one you can go to jupyter notebook third one is id so i'll show you pycharm and how it looks like Okay, so once you're done with installation, open iCharm. Okay, so this opens uh, iCharm ID, and this is how it looks like. So this is how it looks like. You create a project, just a sample project, just to create. Done. Okay. And this is how it looks like. Jupyter notebook. Mm. Until this this is gone, you cannot run anything. So you have to wait for some time. So we'll come back to this again. So you should understand one thing by now. There are three ways you can do Python programming. One using command prompt. So open command prompt or on Linux and Unix, you can go for. Uh, so you can go for command prompt and on Unix and Linux, mostly people do that. And <clears throat> On Windows, you go with command prompt again, and Jupyter Notebook, that is second one, and third one is PyCharm, okay? So now, okay, so we'll start with what can be done with So why I'm getting these messages from Fine. So we'll cover what are the data types and what are the operators and how do you write these programs. So if you look at this program care carefully, so there are some symbols, there are some values and there are some names here and there is an expression here. So this is how you write a program basically. So in Python programs run sequentially line by line. So first line to the last line, everything goes sequentially. There are no special entry points like main function. Uh, and Python has five primitive types. There are uh, um, primitive types. So what is a primitive type and why do you care about type? So because this is a whole number, this is a real number. And if you want to deal with the text, you need a separate type. So we have five primitive types, int, float, Bool, string, and complex. So these are five types. And what do you do with these types? Generally, you don't need to worry about data types as long as you are inside Python programs. So when you store the data in some database or some external, any external data sources, 
or any external data storage places or any anybody who is consuming the data from your program so when the pro data is leaving your program you have to worry about the data types okay so as long as you are inside a program so python understands that the data type is there is a built in function called a type and there is a built in function called print so using print we can print anything on the screen and type function will give you what exactly is the type of the data so because each type of data is stored in memory in a different format so for example if it is a whole number it will be stored simply 1000 and uh, if it is a negative number there is a sign on the left side of the entire bit pattern if it is a float value it will be stored in powers of e so format of each and every data type among these five types is different completely in memory so that the reason we worry about data types okay but in python good thing is you don't need to declare anything like this you don't need to declare just assign a value that creates a variable you are done assign a value that creates a variable so assignment is the only way of creating a variable so <clears throat> so these are the five primitive types so we'll see how, what is the python memory model what is the time now yeah we have 40 50 minutes okay Okay, so can you can you see uh, my video clearly? I mean, no. Okay. Fine. So we can see this screen, right? So what happens is in Python. So when you assign a value, what Python does is it allocates memory for twenty and adds a label x. This is completely opposite and compared to C and Java. So when you assign a value twenty to x, memory is allocated for twenty at some location in memory. Okay, and when you do x equal to thirty, generally this twenty should be replaced. That will not be done. Instead, what Python does is: is there a thirty in the memory? No, there is no thirty in the memory. So it adds thirty. It creates thirty at some other location in memory, and it moves the label x to the new location. I'm just repeating this once again. So when you assign a value, what Python does is it looks into the memory. Is there a twenty in the memory? Is there a twenty in the memory? No. So it creates twenty and add an x to that. X is just a label, and x is allocated at some sorry memory for twenty is allocated at some fixed address. And when you do x equal to thirty in the next statement, if this is the first statement, this is the second statement. Generally, in C language, what happens is, so when you assign a value, simply some memory is allocated for x and twenty is stored there. This is what happens in C language. If you remember, int x equal to twenty. So when you do that, so when you assign x equal to thirty, simply this this will be removed and replaced with thirty. So if you if you have C language background, you understand that. You can't see my my. See one thing you can do. You should see my. Uh, you should see. So uh, I think see see you can do one thing you can actually grab my window if you want. So 
see you can grab my video and you can increase the size of my window you can see that clearly now that's fine <coughs> see if you are using if you are from c language background or any programming language so when you create an integer x like this memory for x is allocated memory is allocated for x and 20 is a value that is stored there and when you do x equal to 30 in the second statement the 30 replaces 20 this is what happens in most of the statically combined languages when it comes to python when you assign a value 20 to x memory is allocated not for x in fact 20 is the owner of this location the memory location 5000 is owned by 20 and x is a temporary label that is attached and when you assign another value 30 what python does is is there a 30 in the memory there is no 30 at that time it creates 30 and it moves the label x from this location to this location and now x address is different so this is a completely new memory model so if you are from c language background and still you're, you're curious what's happening inside that's what you're supposed to do that's what happens actually so in python variables are actually called as labels and their values are actually those are the owners of their respective locations okay so that is the memory model of python and one more thing each time so the current type of 20 is integer so when you assign a different value or different type the data type will be changed. So this is what dynamically typed nature of So this is the, this is dynamically typed nature of Python. Assign any value by the time it changes its data type. Okay, so I'll give you what are exa examples of these data types. See, whenever you assign a new value, the, the data type is changing, right? This is what dynamically typed nature of Python. So I, I'll give you these examples of these x equal to 20. That is an integer, definitely. Two point three. So this is how it looks like. So x is a float value or real value. So now x is a string. True or false. See so capital F and capital capital F and capital T. So here the type of X is Boolean X equal to two plus three J J is the suffix. So this is complex type. Can you see my screen? So code is, can you see the code? I'm not able to see your chart actually.
Okay, so these are the five primitive types. We use them very frequently. Mostly int, float, and string are used a lot to store the data. And complex, very rarely used uh, item, in fact. And Boolean is mostly used for decision control. And whenever you want to see some criteria is matching or not, and want to take a decision, then you use Boolean values, true or false. Okay, particularly that is a, our, our tomorrow's class. So we'll start with control structures. Uh, where you use a lot of boolean values true or false okay so next thing is these are the uh, these are the, the primitive types and we also have composite types so we have again five composite types the first one is list and tuple set trojan set and dictionary <coughs> so we have five composite types okay so why do you use these types See, to do a very small program, simple program, addition of two numbers, x equal to 20, y is equal to 30, and x plus, print x plus y. Sim, very simple, right? And what is the sum of two numbers? Very simple, x plus y. What is sum of 100 numbers? So when do you do the sum of 100 numbers? So generally, you do that when I want to find out the total amount that has been collected today in a banking system, right? You, a lot of deposits will be done. And you collect all the deposits, you have to take all the deposits in a list and you have to sum up, you have to do the sum, right? So definitely in those places, you cannot take variables. You have to depend on composite types. So list is a collection of items. Instead of taking one or two, you just want to take hundreds and thousands. So that's where you can use a list. An example looks like this, a list looks like this. In square brackets, you, have, you can write values. So this is how a list looks like. L is equal to this one. So you can access individual items in this list using a technique called indexing. You write like this. L of zero, that is two. L of one, L of one refers to five. So L of two, zero, this is called indexing. It starts with zero, L of zero, L of one, L of two. So it goes on. So to access individual items, in a list, you use indexing technique. And a tuple, so tuples are mainly used to store structured data. In C language, you have struct, right? S-T-R-U-C-T. In C language, you have struct. So this is how it looks like. Not only structure in, uh, in in tuple also can store multiple, uh, not only tuple, even in list also can store multiple data types. This is how a tuple looks like. And tuple is mo mostly used to store the structure of data. Okay, so what is the structure here? Or what is the set here? Set is, set looks like this. See, we'll go to all these topics again and again. Uh, particularly day after tomorrow, we have a special topic on data structures. Okay, this is only to give you introduction and what we can do with this. So set looks like this. And set does not allow duplicates. Even you write duplicates, it doesn't take the duplicates. And the set looks like this. And if Frozen set also looks like this, the only difference is it is constant. You cannot modify any items in a set. If Frozen set and set both looks like this,
And finally, the dictionary looks like this. Dictionary means a set of key value pairs, key and value. Okay, so the structure and how it looks like, what are the use cases, everything will be described described in the day of tomorrow's class. But now just remember like this. The dictionary looks like this. Okay, these are composite types. And finally, you have binary types. So these are the five types. The three, sorry, this is the third category. Um, you have bytes, that is one type. And a byte array, we don't use them much in regular programming. And last one is memory view. Okay, just remember that these are the types that are available. Mostly you deal with numbers, I mean composite types. These are composite types and primitive types. Okay, totally 10 types you, you're going to use at a lot of places. Okay, so to write a program, you should understand what are the types that are available. So these are very basic types, int, float, again int. And you should also understand the operators. So there are seven categories of operators. When you write a program, when you write a program, you have to write expressions, right? In this program, this is input section and this is output section. And this is the business logic. So to write the business logic, definitely, you have to understand what are the operators available. So there are seven categories of operators. Let's go through them one by one. Arithmetic, relational, logical, bitwise, shorthand assignment, and in special categories are there like membership and identity, okay. Hope you can hear me now, right? Okay, so what is what is the formula to calculate distance between two points? So square root of x1 minus x2 whole square and y1 minus, y1 minus y2 whole square, right? So we have to build some expressions here. So how do you do the power in Python? We'll see the operators first. In Python, we have seven arithmetic operators, plus minus 
star is for multi multiplication slash is for division and percentage is for modulus okay and there are two more operators double slash and double star these are very special in python very exclusive you might have seen these operators in other languages double slash will give you the integer division and double star is for power okay so if you want to calculate power of something you write like this x equal to 20 let's say x equal to simply simply 2 power 3 shift enter you get that so change this 2 power 200 See, Python is so powerful, it can handle numbers up to lakhs of digits. See, this is 2 power 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's a huge number. You can't read this, right? It's a big number. So, Python supports number with multiple sizes, and there is no limit for a memory number for, a, for any variable and its size. Okay, that completely depends on the implementation of the Python. So there are no limits for the numbers. So two power one, two, three, four, five, six. This is power operator. And how do you do the square root then? Maybe square root means number power one by two, right? Four power one by two. That is a, that is what you can write like this, right? Or else simply four power zero point five. Power zero point five means square root. Okay, we'll use that logic and to write expressions, you also use parenthesis wherever there is there is required. So distance between these two points is d is equal to square root of, okay, we'll do that. Something power square root. Okay. x1 minus x2 whole square in power 2 plus y1 minus y2 whole square and hold to the power of square root and you can print this is a new format string format in which have, which have come very recently from python 3.8 distance is just use the variable name in curly braces that prints enter so 3.6 something and I don't want to see a big number like this I want to round this off to two digits we have a built-in round function D and give only two that prints only two digits there's a built-in round function you can use to give anything one, two, three, four, uh, I mean, four, five, six, seven, for example. So if you give three, that actually rounds it off to three digits. Okay, you can use that function to give you, get the only two digits. Okay, so this is, these are the operators and arithmetic operators. Double star means power and double slash is integer division. Seven double slash two will give you integer division. And single slash will give you real division 7 by 2 is 3.5 7 double slash 2 is 3 okay so one more important operator you guys are already aware of this modulus 7 mod 4 7 mod 4 is 3 because 3 is remainder right so the modulus operator divides the number in integer arithmetic and you will see the reminder at the end okay so writing a program is very simple you don't need to worry about the functions and how to compile all that stuff take variables build expressions and print the output okay and you read data from keyboard it's very simple so instead of reading data like this, instead of writing data directly into the program, you can actually take input. Okay, so let's start with this one. 
You can also read values from the keyboard using input function. Okay, so using input function, you can actually read input from the keyboard. And the problem with input function is it reads everything in text format. It reads everything in text format. The in production we will never use input function. In most of the cases, Python developer, they don't use input or print functions in production. Let's see what is the output here. Reading two values X and Y and output is 2030. Why so? Because default by default input function reads everything in text format. Clear? So how do you translate this? So you have to apply a conversion function, convert the text into your target type. So now this time we should see the proper output. So not only int, that depends on what is, the, what is the exact requirement. So if you want to read x as float, you can also convert this into float. So 2.3 and 4, 6.3. That depends on your requirement. But don't give wrong values. For float, you can give, for float, you can give integer values. But for integer, don't use float, float values. You'll get an error. Okay, because real uh, float is real type and it has it is a superset of the actual. Can you hear me now? Okay. So using print function, this is how you, you can print the values. So you have to use F in front of the string and write the text. So write the text and use curly braces wherever you want to substitute the values. Okay. Curly brace of X means that substitute the x value. So this is the very latest uh, Python function, uh, Python uh, format string. So before Python 3.7, you cannot work in this format. There is a different um, syntax. So by default, print function prints a slash n at the end. This is the default syntax of, this is the default syntax. So by default, it prints a slash and at the end, you don't need to worry about it. Okay, if you don't want to print slash and at the end, just use that syntax. You don't write this all the time. By default, there is another parameter for print function and is equal to slash and that is default. Okay, so now, so 
remaining sets of operators that uh, particularly logical and um, and relational operators will discuss tomorrow along with the control structures and for now so the, there are binary operators and those are of not that use we we don't use binary operators much in python because python is a high level language in c and c++ mostly we use uh, these binary operators or bitwise operators uh, particularly we write system programming so logical and uh, uh, relational we'll discuss tomorrow and bitwise so i don't explain them much um so what is what are these operators so just want to give you an introduction that's it if you are familiar with c language you most is familiar with them so left shifting you shift all the bits in a in a variable to the left side and right shifting and you shift every byte every bit in the um, number or a value to the right side and bitwise end so when you operate this with two two binary digits or two numbers so you can bind you can directly write binary numbers like this in um, in python 0 b prefix you should use you can use binary end so what it does is it does this is end right if both are ones you get one in remaining cases you get zero so all the explanation for these operators is there in detail in the material so we i think we don't cover this as part of uh, uh, today's class we'll see if you have any any time uh, these these operators not having those many uh, use cases when compared to the remaining operators so the bitwise end and bitwise are all is generally used particularly in system side programming and where you deal with the bytes and bits uh, one example is network packet capturing network uh, network data processing so for example so you want to send Uh, a lot of information and you want to encode bits and bytes in a byte in that case generally you have to extract one bit from entire byte and you have to make on i mean zero bit should become one on means one off means zero so if you want to process at that level generally we use bitwise operators okay or else these are of not no use and the next one is shorthand assignment operators i think these operators are also there in other languages okay shorthand assignment x equal to 20 and what about ex plus is equal to 1 so this plus equal to 1 is short hand assignment operator so x equal to x, x plus 1 equal to 1 means x equal to x plus 1 that clear so we have plus equal to 1 minus equal to and star equal to slash equal to double slash equal to for most of the operators we have short hand assignment operators okay x equal to x plus 1 to do this one we use x x plus 1 x plus equal to 1 x plus equal to 1 means x equal to x plus 1 okay similarly the remaining operators and finally the special case is membership operators is very very important this is very pythonic in and not in so i want to check <coughs> whether a string is part of another string 
this is what you do l in hello world so that returns a true so to check a string is part of another string or not we use we can use in operator and there is another example even for composite types you can use in operator is 99 is part of this list yes or no it's false right so in is very very powerful generally in most of the languages we say less than is very powerful operator but when it, when it comes to python in is very powerful operator the reason is it is very intelligent on the right side you have a list right so what it does is it performs a linear searching it takes 99 and compares with each and every item Okay, so not only a list, it also works on tuples and sets, but it uses a different strategy to check these items. We'll discuss this in data success topic. Okay, in and not in. 99 in this list, yes, is 55 in this list. No, right? And 55 not in this list, that is true. Okay, fine. And so is and is not, it's also simple. Uh, let's say when you take two strings, first string, see for your information, anything that is in single quotes or double quotes or triple quotes is considered as a string in Python. So that means. Anything that is in single quotes or double quotes, quotes are same. Okay, so that is considered as a string only. Yes, double equal to yes two. So when when you want to compare two strings, generally we use logical operators. So logical operators we have skipped actually. So this is how mostly you guys are aware of logical operators. Relational and logical, okay? So relational operators, you just want to compare the two numbers are equal or less than or greater than, less than and less than are equal to, greater than and greater than are equal to, and not equal to and double equal to, okay? So what we do is, we just check the relation is true or false. That is where the Boolean values, the Boolean values will work. I want to check whether this, this relationship is true or false. Is x less than y? Yeah, true. x equal to y? True or false? False. The problem here is, particularly with strings, when you want to compare s1 is equal to s2, s double equal to s2. This is what you do, right? But what happens is, when you use double equal to to compare two strings, individual characters can be will be compared. Is A equal to A, P is equal to P, P is equal to P. So individual characters can be compared, it will be compared when you use double equal to. But when you use identity operators, is and is not. When you use is and is not, yes one, and I want to compare S1, is S2 or not is true when s1 is s2 and there is a lot of difference between these two statements s1 is s2 this actually compares their addresses instead of the content if address is same content must be same so that is the principle they are using um, so if address is same content must be same X is Y, of course.
okay so fine so how long you are not listening my voice can you hear me now can you hear me now oh my god so your responses are so slow from strings okay so then we'll start the tomorrow that's fine so we have so many issues today uh, because of overwhelming people so more than 1500 people are not able to log in because of the limitation in the zoom it's a commercial account but still we are not able to handle the load anyway so <clears throat> <clears throat> we'll start early definitely <clears throat> today first half an hour so we are handling so many issues with the logins okay so tomorrow if you have any questions you can keep those questions inside uh, in that uh, i mean there is a list right broadcasting list you can talk to those group admins and if you have any questions tomorrow in the first session we'll ask we will have the q and a so this recorded session is available okay so i'll be sharing that today itself in an hour of time 